we, we mentioned Alavi came out and said that, that oh by the way yeah Khamenei issued a fatwa but we could maybe we will still need a, a nuclear weapon even though uh, that is supposed to be haram according to Khamenei we don't know on how, what what made him do say that we don't know if he's like he's just like he did he have Khamenei's blessing when he went on national TV and said that or he didn't okay because if he didn't then like what this is like if he did that means Khamenei is like regretting what he said and he's trying to test the waters to see if he could undo what he did so that's significant but if he didn't that's also very significant because well, I mean, has like, anybody come out against him and contradicted him yeah. has anybody else come and said yes. that oh Mahmoud Alavi should not have said that and, yes you know, yes in a lot of even like Raifi Poo for example came out and tweeted like why is he saying this he's this oh, is gonna have Raifi Poo one of the hardliners right okay so they're like this is what, gonna, what about Rouhani and Khamenei and those guys not yet we're waiting to see any response to this <laughs> <laughs> it's like I mean I think everybody's dumb fan. Like everybody's oh like what? God. Like it would any run everyone like what is, what is happening, right? But but it's people are saying, a lot yeah. a lot of hardliners are saying why did he do this? This is gonna make it very difficult for us to negotiate anything with anybody ever again. Like this is gonna have consequences for Iran for, I, for it's decades. It's like going back on the Iran deal. It's like, you know, you're going back to these guys. Trump went back on the thing and okay. then these guys going back on the fight. But, but anyway, okay, yeah. Go ahead. But, so, there, so that could be a conflict with Khamenei. It could, or it could be not. It could be like Khamenei just making somebody say his word without him saying it. So we don't know that. There is definitely a conflict between them and IRGC. Um, one thing that I didn't even get the chance to is the Wall Street Journal came coming out and saying that the uh, inspectors have found like radioactive traces in places that the international inspectors were not even allowed. That's a major revelation that we didn't even get to uh, talk about today. Um, but again, going back to um, internal struggles, one thing else that is now becoming was always there a little bit, but now it's becoming more and more public is um mujtaba khamenei um that might this might be its own live stream okay mujtaba khamenei is ali khamenei's son and for years it was assumed that ali khamenei is trying to make sure that he becomes the supreme leader after he dies and now it seems like those assumptions are were true that he's trying for it and Within the hardliners, some a lot of them don't like that, okay? Um, but he, the moves that has been made behind the scenes in trying to make this man the next supreme leader after Khamenei um, is becoming more and more public, okay? So we had a WikiLeaks revelation a, a couple of years ago that showed that Mushtaba Khamenei, even though he's nowhere to be seen, he doesn't speak in public. Nobody knows his philosophy, his views is never, you know, he's nowhere. He's like behind the scenes. Like nobody, no, most Iranians don't even know he exists. Most Iranians, even if you're, many Iranians, again, not all of them, if you go to them and say Mushtaba Khamenei, they're like Mushtaba who? Um, but apparently he's a, he's a huge element in po Iran's politics, right? Apparently he is, he was involved with Iran um, arming the Taliban. He was involved in working with Qasem Soleimani in arming Shia elements in Iraq. Uh, apparently, he picks presidents in Iran because he's the one that decided to switch from Talibov to Ahmadinejad. Um, uh, sorry, um, you know, uh, because of his uh, in regards to who is going to be president next. Apparently, you know, democracies are uh, like elections be damned. Apparently, Mushtaba Khamenei decides who's the president. Um, apparently, Mushtaba Khamenei and apparently he picks who's the head of um, radio and television in Iran behind the scenes. And apparently, he's very hawkish when it comes to use use of military uh, in Iranian politics. Okay, um, and it seems like he's been um, being introduced to more more religious leaders in Iran to to. Uh, and more one one signal that more people understood that this guy is trying to be pushed forward as um as the next supreme leader was how fast how 
his process of him becoming uh, a mujtahid, a major mujtahid, was pushed forward, um, which is not a big small thing. Like I don't know if people understand what ijtihad is and the gates of ijtihad was supposed to be closed and now the gates of ijtihad are open apparently again and Khomeini when the Islamic revolution in Iran happened Khomeini introduced um, some religious leaders being mujtahid mujtahid means like somebody that can do ijtihad and ijtihad means like you introduce new concepts in Islam and new ways of doing Islamic law and jurisprudence and that's something that was supposed to be closed and nobody gets to do that anymore. And they opened it. Uh, Khomeini also played around with it in his book, Velayat Faghi, trying to bring up a new version of Islam, right? New version of not just Shia Islam, right? So Khomeini brought that back, but that was not something that he thought that he wanted people to be able to just, uh, that was some, that is something that only a few managed, this is like, you level up as a religious leader. This is not something that you would get to that most people will be able to get to achieve. Like you should, you shouldn't even be able to count them on one hand, right? But apparently, they're pushing Mujtaba Khamenei as a Mujtahid, and he's and he's being called as an Ayatollah um, in Rome by other people that know him. Like he's being referred to as an Ayatollah, which is like, how did this happen? Don't you like, have to earn that? Yeah, like this, the, the he's just like skipping through levels, right? The fact that this is being pushed, like people like he's becoming an ayatollah, it just seems very a b huge signal um, to the world that this is the next supreme leader. But I don't know if IRGC approves that. I, the, he does have a lot of connections in IRGC. He did. Uh, a lot of people think that it was him that stole the election from the reformists. Um, with the help of IRGC in favor of like the the fraud elections that happened was Mushtaba Khamenei is doing. So he's like, he seems to be like a major power behind the scenes. Uh, and apparently Ali Khamenei's pick for, again, the, the reason why this is very significant is because one of the major, um, you know, demonizations of the Pahlavis of the monarchs before the Islamic revolution was that um, leadership should not be inherited, right? Leader, it's very funny this is coming from Shias because that's what Sunni says. Yeah, the that's what Sunni, <laughs> yeah, Sunni say against Shias like, hey, your imams are imams just because they're son of the next imam. Uh, and you guys are now saying the Velayat Faqih, how many comments are like, how is, the people should be able to pick their leaders? It shouldn't be like, it shouldn't be a dynasty. It shouldn't be based on inheriting it from your father. So it's, this, it's like the caliphs more than the imams. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Well, yeah, <laughs> exactly, exactly. But now if Khamenei wants to p pick his son for his the next supreme leader, people are like, hey, what happened to all of this? You guys saying the monarchs had it wrong because the son of the king become the next king. Um, so that that is a, that is something that is happening behind the scenes. Um, I, I could talk about Mushtaba Khamenei for a long time. I don't want to, but I just want to let people know that the bigger struggle, the struggle between the hardliners and the reformists in Iran has been won. Hardliners won, reformists lost. Okay. The main struggle that we're not, we seem to be looking forward to now is the struggle between the hardliners and the hardliners. Uh, and that is going to be so interesting so get your popcorns and, ready and, and the know. only guy that the, the, there's this lone presidential candidate that's running in june the only guy who's running is also uses the military advisor to Khamenei, right directly who like that? the the guy who's running for president what's his name well Dad. there's the, okay so there are a whole bunch of them and i don't i don't know how you're so certain about who's going to win but that's the, what the, I was, well i mean what i was reading said, was that he's the only one who's actually contending who's running properly mm. uh, but well, i don't know okay so you yeah, should, well you seem to know yeah. more about the chances like that I, I i have to look into that but my, my understanding is that the hardliners are going to take over everything that's currently the prediction uh we'll see what's going to happen right um but yeah so it, the, the elections to a lot of uh, people in iran are are now irrelevant because they think like it doesn't really matter who wins reformers or hardliners the hardliners yeah. control everything let, let me just clear this up like so yeah this is the garden 11th february 11th 2021 
uh, it's saying the only declared candidate in Iran's presidential elections this June has accused Joe Biden of continuing Donald Trump's foreign policies, blah, 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 and that's Hossein Dagan, who's a military advisor to the Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei. Um, so yeah. it seems like he's the only declared candidate who's running. Yeah, but that's gonna that can change soon. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, I have to. I have to look into the chances of who's going to win. I, I, the chance, like there are multiple candidates that people are discussing w whether they have a chance or not, uh, and all of them are hardliners, right? Okay. There's one. There's there's a there's some other reformers that seem to be saying things that seems like they're going to also be joining the race, but many people think they don't have a chance. Uh, even even Hashemi Rafsanjani's daughter seems to be like flirting with it, which is like some people suggesting that, which is ridiculous. It's a woman, that's you know. But anyways, that's uh, that's another discussion for another day. Um, In your opinion, you're saying that Armin, a woman, should not be president of Iran. That's what you're saying, Armin. <laughs> no, no, I'm saying it's ridiculous. Just for... clip this. That we want to cut this part out completely without context and you know, put it up on Twitter. Oh, oh, wait, wait. we can't cancel Armin on Twitter anymore. Yeah, hey guys, if you want to join these streams live, get your comments and questions read by Ali and Armin and the guests, and most importantly, to get full access to the full video versions of all these episodes, become a patron. Link in the description below.